Hi, I'm uh, Professor Bill Zettler. Um, I'm with the Department of Plant Pathology here at the University of Florida. I should say I was with the University of Florida. I've retired in 2003. Um, I first came here in 1966, a long time ago, uh, and my specialty is in plant biology. Uh, and the subspecialty within plant biology is the characterization and control of viruses of such ornamentals, tropical plants such as the elephant ear, uh, ornamentals such as gladiolus and orchids, and I've also done a bit of work with uh, legume crops such as peanuts. So I've had a kind of a broad career. My, my specialty, uh, and that was important at that time because plant viruses were not too well characterized, and so many of the virus problems that growers were experiencing, particularly ornamentals, they just didn't know very much about them, and so they required characterization. So in the process, we were able to actually identify and describe new viruses that hadn't been described before. My work with orchid viruses um, started in the very early 70s um, uh, because orchids simply have serious problems with orchids, uh, with viruses rather. And uh, my main focus was not in that case so much to study the characterization of orchid viruses, but to concentrate on two that were pretty well known, Orthodontoglossum rain spot and Cymbidium mosaic virus. But there, because the orchid industry is a very interesting industry with many collections comprised of oh, huge numbers of species and varieties, it was a matter of, of how do these viruses occur within commercial plantings. And then in, in, in the process of that work, we started wondering, for example, why it would be, uh, what would the situation be with native orchids? And that became my main focal point in what work I did with orchid viruses. We started off with a study in Florida, like Mayaka State Park and the Everglades, and we made a hypothesis that uh, because viruses are seldom, if ever, transmitted through seeds of plants, particularly orchids, that native orchids would not have viruses. In contrast to the commercial orchids or, or hobbyist uh, orchid houses where, where these viruses occurred in high frequency, and they are there in high frequency because uh, the, these viruses are carried by cutting tools, and so a grower unwittingly cuts into an infected plant and transmits it to a healthy one. But out in nature, when plants are seed propagated and the seeds are airborne and lodged, for example, in the, the, the clefts of trees, uh, they are not in contact with humans, not in contact with knives, that kind of thing. And sure enough, when we actually looked at orchids and compared the virus incidence in commercial orchids versus native orchids, we never found a virus in native orchids. We've done subsequent work in such strange places as French Polynesia. Uh, we, we went to the um, university, I should say, USDA smokehouse in Miami to get orchids that were collected in the wild. And in all the work we, that we did, we never ever found either virus, Cymbidium mosaic or, or Odontoglossum ring spot in native orchids. It's only after they became infected, which uh, led us to be able to give some rather practical advice to orchid growers, uh, having ascertained that particular point. So um, that became a, a, a main thrust and produced a number of students in this research and it became quite a bit of fun actually. Um, I've been a teacher for quite a while. Um, when I first came to Florida in 1966, I was responsible for uh, the graduate level plant virology course in, in the Department of Plant Pathology, and I taught that for about 20 years or so. Uh, as, um, as time went on, I then became the instructor of a Fundamentals of Plant Pathology course, which is a basic course, and uh, taught that until I retired in, in 2003. I still teach, uh, even though I am retired, I still teach on a part-time basis. And this is for a, a large enrollment course. Uh, we, we, it's called Plants, Plagues, and People to uh, several hundred students each, each, each semester uh, in the fall, uh, in the spring rather, in summer B terms. And that's a lot of fun too. So overall, I've had a, a, a good time throughout my career. I've gotten to know many, many people, growers, became very, very impressed with orchid growers and other growers and for what they know and uh, rather liked the fact that my work tended to be uh, suited for them and trying to find the most practical ways to address virus disease problems. And so uh, that's pretty much my story. The, um, talking about orchids, it's, 
Uh, not that I had anything to do with it. It's interesting, my son, uh, uh, Dr. Lawrence Zettler, happened to become interested in orchids himself, but not in the pathology. Uh, his field of study, and he teaches out of Illinois College in Jacksonville, Illinois, he's become quite an authority on, on seed germination using mycorrhizal fungi. So there's two Zettlers. It used to be that I was the well-known Zettler among the Orchid Society. No longer. It is he uh, that gets all the questions and queries. So my rotten son now is more famous than I am. And I guess with that I should conclude the interview. <laughs> <laughs>